At the edge of our solar system, between 460 billion and 9.2 trillion miles away from the sun, there are some rocks. These rocks, having formed approximately 4.6 billion years ago alongside the other objects in our solar system in the protoplanetary disk of gas accrued by the birth of the sun, are separated on average by a distance of 170 million miles to their nearest neighbour. Comet size, they hold a surface temperature around 5 degrees above absolute zero in direct sunlight. And to an observer marooned on one of these islands, the neighbourhood rocks, the sun, the earth and all other objects in the expansive sky appear only as stars of varying magnitudes. This group of rocks, made up of trillions of comets arranged in a rough spherical shell around the solar system, is named after Jan Oort, the Dutch astronomer who first theorised its existence. The nearest known star to our sun, Proxima Centauri, is roughly 4.2 light years away, meaning that, travelling at the speed of light, it would take the same time as 4.2 orbits of the Earth around the sun to reach it in a spacecraft. Translated into miles, this distance is 24 trillion miles, around 2.6 times the 9.2 trillion miles between the edge of the Oort cloud and the sun, though to a human this kind of scale is practically impossible to grasp. On astronomical and gravitational scales, this distance is in fact neighbourly. There are 63 stars in 53 solar systems within 16 light years of Earth, and the gravitational perturbations and chaos of this harmonic system interferes with the large, slow, low-energy orbits of the objects in the Oort cloud. As these local stars pass each other and us by, in a different configuration for every close approach, they push and pull on the shell of our solar system, and when things add up in the right way, they can free Oort cloud objects from their domain, giving them what so much of the universe endures without. Energy. Light. Heat. Enthalpy. Sapped from the falling of decaying stars and dead planets, these objects are pulled from their domain to give us our rare ghostly celestial visitors. Comets. The comets in our solar system are thought to have two common origins. Short period comets, those with orbits of up to 200 years in length, are thought to originate from the Kuiper belt, a belt of large objects around 15 times warmer than the Oort cloud, stretching from the orbit of Neptune, around 2.8 billion miles from the Sun, to around 4.6 billion miles away from the Sun, more than 43 times closer than the edge of the Oort cloud. By contrast, long period comets are thought to originate from the Oort cloud as a result of the gravitational interference of other nearby stars. These comets regularly have orbits that last thousands of years, and the most famous of these comets is the comet Hale-Bopp. Discovered in 1995, it was visible in the night sky with the naked eye at record brightness for 18 months as it passed through its closest approach to the sun, known as its perihelion point. Hale-Bopp was a breakthrough for astronomers as a glimpse into the makeup of the objects in the Oort cloud. These objects that have their orbits shifted to come close to the sun, often closer to the sun than to the Earth, after having spent so long at the coldest temperatures possible where sunlight is still present, quickly begin to warm, evaporating into enormous sunlit clouds of dust, gas, water and debris, forming a comet's distinctive tail. This often rapid process, especially relative to the lifetime of these objects, can often throw enough matter away from the body of the comet as it effectively acts as a weak solar-powered rocket, with the impulse rotating the comet and altering its orbit, sometimes pushing it into an orbit closer to the sun, where it will ultimately melt and evaporate completely to its demise, and sometimes further solidifying its orbit as a long period comet, destined to swing between the furthest edges of the Oort cloud and the core planets of the solar system, until it has melted away into the zodiacal dust cloud that envelops the planets nearest the sun. Using the sunlight filtering through the tails of comets as they pass us by, scientists can use an astronomy technique called spectroscopy to determine the chemical compounds making up the comet, and collect more data on the nature of the Oort cloud, of long period comets, and of the matter that led to the birth of the Earth and its siblings around 4.6 billion years ago. This remote, untouching observation of our cosmic backyard, neighbourhood and world are the simplest and most earnest attempts of our species simply to understand. Watching the pendulum dance of the order and chaos of the points of light floating above us for our entire existence, we, creatures born of long dead stars, 
allow the universe to understand itself. We try to understand why, if for any reason at all, there is space and time to fill or not with deeds and works and life and matter. We strive to know why there is light in the darkness, why there are islands in the abyss, and if we are bound to live and survive in a unique haven of random chance, or whether we are, in fact, not alone, living only in ignorance of the cosmic life around us. The Oort Cloud, in this venture, represents the final frontier. It is the wall of our garden and the cliff from which we must jump to reach the cosmic ocean. With only the rare comets to remind us that this boundary is there, to remind us to look up from our toils and remember the skies, this cold, lifeless Rubicon is only breached by rare foreign objects. Interstellar interloper comets like Oumuamua and 2i Borisov, and, in approximately 300 years, deep space explorers like Voyagers 1 and 2. The beauty of rare gifts like comets, our neighbouring planets, stars and galaxies, in contrast to the cold and empty rocky quanta of the Oort Cloud, should inspire us to remember to watch the sky, because contained within it are all things but ourselves. It is easy to look at our own Earth and say, everything that is, or was, or ever will be, is contained within that blue marble, but in fact we should be turning our gaze and knowing that everything else besides us that is, or was, or ever will be, is out there, the dark from whence we came. Ignoring it would be infinitely selfish, as it is ignoring the infinite expanse outside ourselves. Understanding it reminds us of the true scale of the things in our lives. The taste of bread, the sound of trees, the softness of the wind, small things in the earth and the air and the lives around us. Things as alien to the atoms of the Oort Cloud as they are to us. It reminds us of the absurdity and sheer wonder of existence, that we, in our short time, are, against all odds, concentrations of more energy and enthalpy than any rock a hundred thousand million miles away will see in its entire coil through the universe. And in that, it leaves us thankful for the things and lives we care about, in a way no earthly thing can.